This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association for MTK Global. Eddie Earn did his first IFL interview yesterday, first one of the year. Now it's just going to be every day. You do realise yeah, that? I know. Like, what are you even doing here? I mean, this is this is. I mean, actually, I have to respect the hustle because, as you know, yesterday I was talking to Coogan about this new idea we've got, which is trying. And Coogan was like, "Can we can we come and film that?" It's like, no, we're doing this for our YouTube channel. So we're here in an sort of undercover location and you've turned up to nick our talent and our content for what we're trying to do for our YouTube channel. So thanks very much, mate. And I would like to say, I would like to steal your YouTube subscribers now. I would like to say, if you haven't subscribed to Matchroom Boxing YouTube yet, please do. I think we're at 150k subscribers now. We've only been going for six or seven months, probably. No, obviously, you're at half a million plus. So, Okay, mate. But you've been doing it for a long time, so please subscribe. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure a lot of them subscribers came from the YouTube fight yeah. uh, from KSI Logan Paul. We've got Joe Weller down yeah. here today. We know we've got a YouTube fight on the Miami card mm -hmm. next week. What sort of impact do you think that had on the likes of Billy Joe Saunders, Devin Haney? Did their profiles actually rise? A genuine question, Eddie. Their followers did. You know, we've seen from their social media and from their numbers, it, their followers increased a huge amount. Um, I guess it's hard to not even monetize, but even, you know, confirm the growth of their fan base through being on there. But when you look at the amount of people that visit their social handles, that follow them, that use them in use their name in Google search, that yeah, yes. So I think yes, and that's one of the topics we're discussing today. Um, it's a really tough one with the whole YouTube celebrity boxing etc etc because you have to understand that our job with our broadcasters is to deliver numbers and drive views and interest and the same goes for our sponsors as well so this does it right but it's getting the mix right between a circus and delivering for your key partners that ultimately determine the success of your business. So when you do a show like KSI against Logan Paul and to zone, sit down and go, wow, we smash your subscribers. You know, the interest we had in the platform, the exposure and the profile that it gave to our our, uh, our business was incredible. Sky say, I cannot believe how many buyers this did at four o'clock in the morning. Can you do another one, right? And then it's the mix of saying, like, this, for me, this is something that has to be sprinkled in the schedule. It's not something that should be done every week or every month, but you can't ignore it. So it's trying to get, you know, we got away with the first one, or KSI Logan Ball 2, because it was an amazing event, it was full of energy, and it was a decent fight. Next week, will we get away with Jake Paul against Gibb? It's on the undercard, so there's not as much pressure for it to deliver, and there aren't the boxing aficionados coming out saying, it's disgusting that these guys are on the undercard of this fight. So. I'm a boxing purist, and a lot of the people that we've got here are boxing purists, but they also understand that without the support of a broadcaster, without the support of your sponsors, without the numbers, there is no business. So we've just got to get the mix right between respecting the code, which is difficult to do when you're putting those fights on, and delivering. And uh, that's as honest as I can be. Fair enough. Did you notice a lot of the subscribers from... KSI Logan Paul, whether it was on Matrim YouTube, his own Sky Sports Boxing YouTube, they unsubscribed after no. the event. No. no. I mean, from our perspective, absolutely not. I mean, we haven't had people unsubscribing from our YouTube platform. Um, his own? From the zone, yes, churn rate, but only the same churn rate as a boxing event. So, for instance, when Canelo would fight, some, some would sign up for a monthly pass, some would sign up for an annual pass, and then would either pay again for the next month or churn off. The churn rate wasn't dissimilar to that of a boxing fan, but don't forget, we also announced Gibb against Jake Paul, which would make you stay if you were following that, that kind of market. And yeah, I saw a lot of, I think one of the problems I have in America is they don't tend to get my sarcasm, right? So when I did a piece recently about DAZN monthly uh, subscription price, it was quite funny because I just said, I'm gonna speak to DAZN about trebling that because you've got to buy the annual pass, right? 
And next it's like $50 now, isn't next it? Next thing is like, Hearn wants to treble. I was like, no, it was a joke. But what I'm saying to you is, if you're paying $19.99 a month, or you can pay $99 a year, and you want to watch all the boxing that we produce on DAZN, Golden Boy, Canelo, AJ, um, you know, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, uh, Danny Jacobs, Chocolatito, Estrada, Usyk, Golovkin, I mean, list, Devin Haney, list goes on and on. Just subscribe for the, for the annual pass. And what we're trying to encourage is people to do that. I don't want people coming in and out. I want to try and build a almost like a family of subscribers on DAZN who are in for the year, who can digest all the content, the shoulder programming, all the different fights, MMA fights, change up baseball. You know, now we've got the darts on DAZN in America, all the pool, etc. So, but I just said, so I'm going to talk to them and I'm going to get them to treble the monthly price. Mate, you wouldn't believe the direct messages I was getting from American fight fans going, Hearn, don't treble the monthly price. I'm like, one, I've got no control over the price, but of course they're not going to treble the price. I'm just saying, buy the annual pass. And in answer to your question, your original question, the same kind of churn that we'd see from a boxing fan, the truth is we'll never know if those new fans are have suddenly become hardcore boxing fans, but what we do know is they're still there. So they're watching. Isn't a way to kind of get people to stay on is to raise that monthly price though? So you kind of, I know you were joking, but kind of a correct yeah, I think thing you were saying. They have, you know, they have. Originally it was $9.99 a month. It's nineteen ninety nine now. But the annual pass rate has come down. I think it's like $8.50 a month or something like that if you buy the annual pass. So we want to encourage the annual pass. And not being funny, if you're going to spend $80 on one night of pay-per-view for, I don't know, Wilder Ortiz, you're telling me you're not going to spend $99 for a whole year on the zone. I mean, it is the best schedule in, uh, in boxing, unrivaled on the zone. So, and we're seeing a lot of people are taking the annual pass, but I think the new audience coming in for like a Joe Weller, Anderson Gibb next week. Joe Weller? Yes, uh, sorry, it may be, we'll ask him. Um, Jake Paul and Anderson Gibb probably will come in on an annual, on a, on a monthly pass, you know? You've gone on record saying pay-per-view is dead in America. Not, no, that's Oscar De La Hoya said that. What I said is pay-per-view is dead at the price point, right? So the problem with pay-per-view in America is, is you've got these big events that are getting so few eyeballs. So you look at like Deontay Wilder, for example, his last fight with Ortiz, I don't know what he did, 200,000 buys, 250,000 buys, some, somewhere in that range. So the world heavyweight champion, who is a, he is a star, you know, and should be a, a mega star, his American eyeballs are 200,000. You know, AJ against Reese did over a million in America on the zone. So, and that's supposed to be a small platform. So. One of the all-time problems of pay-per-view is the audience that it basically is restricted to because it's a, it's a pay service. So I just can't believe that they get away with charging $90 in America. I'm quite jealous. I think I should start doing it in England. No, we're all right. We're okay. 75 quid. Imagine. <laughs> I wonder how many buyers would do it at 75 quid. <laughs> considering it yeah. now. But, but, but the argument is, is the revenue would be the same. Right? If you've got AJ fighting Ruiz and you're doing a million buys at X and you're doing 100,000 at X, the revenue could be the same, but that's not the point. If I was in the US, I would be lowering that. that if I had a pay-per-view model, I would be lowering that pay-per-view price to try and drive the audience. Um, and I, I don't, it's 80 bucks, 90 bucks. It's just madness. Did you see Bob Arum's comments? I think it was just after Christmas. Um, he said that he expects Wilder Fury to do two million pay-per-view buys in America. Bob's, Bob's a classic. Um, it won't do a million buys, in my, in my opinion. I think if it does five or 600,000 buys, I think it's very good. Um, he's struggling. It's not selling very well at the box office. They've done, they, didn't, they weren't going to do a press conference. They said that. They did one, and it was a bit of a shambles, so they're doing another one on Saturday. So they've gone from, we don't need a press conference, to they've done two in two weeks. So it's not going to do that great. And it's not because... Wilder's not a star or Fury's no good. It's just that boxing is a tough market in the US. And, you know, I think that it's way, way behind all the other bits and pieces of American football, baseball, hockey, basketball, 
college football. This is what they're up against. And with us, what we're up against here is Premier League football. That's it. Uh, Kogan didn't really touch upon this yesterday. Can you go into the offer from Saudi Arabia about Joshua facing the winner of World of Europe? I don't know. I do talk some shit. I don't know whether... So it all came out like we've, we've had this huge offer, as in the number has been determined and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What we've had is we've, we've talked numbers with Saudi. They're our partners. And we know what they would pay for an undisputed fight. And having, knowing what they will pay, I can't see how the fight can't happen for either outcome. Like, and it's going to be quite straightforward. The winner of that fight, we're going to go to them and say, do you want to do this fight in Saudi? This is the pot of money. We're going to carve it up. Are you in? No, we can't. We've got to do the rematch. No problem. OK, we'll fight Usyk and then we'll do it next year. Do you know what I mean? So... Um, those Saudi guys were with David Haynes already, haven't they? Yeah, they were everyone. Yeah, they love it. They're massive, massive fight fans. Prince Khalid loves his boxing, and that's one of the main reasons that we're in the relationship, and there's going to be many, many more. So he, was, he went to Vegas to see Floyd and all the guys, and he's everywhere. You know, he loves it. It's, it's big plans now for Saudi, big plans. The first one was so successful that it's really the go-ahead to do three or four in 2020. I'm sure the UK fans won't want to hear this, but there's whispers going around that from Fury's side that Joshua Fury won't happen in the UK. That won't I don't, I don't. I can't see how it does. So you, you I can understand I, that. I, I just can't see. I mean, for me, it should happen in the UK. And if there's a way to do it, we'll do it. But the problem is the money that could be... Because the government here don't invest in bringing mega events to the UK. They don't necessarily need to. You know, they've got a Premier League football game every weekend that's selling 50, 60, 80,000. But other countries, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's Congo, whether it's China, whether it's Saudi, whether it's Qatar, whether it's Abu Dhabi, their government and their tourism department has a huge pot of money that they're looking to bring major events, entertainment acts to showcase their country to the world as a tourism destination. So, and, and you can't, you know, I know it's easy. Like someone said to me the other day, what was it? Um, oh, that was it last night. Someone just messaged me and said, for fuck's sake, Eddie, Saudi Arabia, like, just who cares about the money? Just, you're so greedy, just do it in England. It's like, do you think that I go up to the guys and say, guys, um, you can make 150 million each to do it in Saudi or 40 million in the UK? But the, uh, Dave on Twitter from Rochdale says you're a cunt and you've got to do it, excuse my language, and you've got to do it in uh, England. It doesn't work like that. Have a brain, you know? So, and it's not even that the fighters are greedy. If it was the difference of 10 million each, or, but it's not. It's double to go somewhere else. And it can't be ignored, especially a fight like that. So it's a one-off. What about Vegas? Do you think MGM could compete having Joshua Fury with your Saudis and Dubai, etc.? No, 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 is the answer. But I think that... Um, it's a case of the, probably the only people, along with a huge uh, broadcast fee from the zone, or if it, all of a sudden it does become a two million pay-per-view fight. But what we found from the Ruiz fight is the subscriptions were so high on the zone, and it was out of the country and and on what is supposed to be a poor time. So what we're actually finding now is that it doesn't really make too much of a difference where that fight is. And from a UK perspective, the Saudi fight broke the revenue record and it was on at 9pm. All right, Eddie, I think we're going to pick it back up in a bit. Cheers. Just picking this back up with Eddie, and that was very interesting did listen. You, did you listen to it, yeah? I don't know where it's going to go, but it's just basically a lot of people... Well, Matt from YouTube. Yeah, I know, but a lot of people are quite respect from their industries, chatting, boxing, life. I don't know, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Good. Listen, yeah, so make sure you watch on uh, Match on YouTube, but obviously watch all IFL uploads first. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, you know we were talking about the American market design. Do you think fighters are still getting overpaid, like even with ESPN yeah. and PBC? Yeah, yeah. but it, it's going to change, you know, and it, it will change at some point. But listen, good luck to the fighters. Let them, let them make their money. You know, right now they're getting money that we've never seen in the sport before. It won't last, but catch it while you can. We know Bob Arum uh, wanted to go to China with Ramirez Possible. Then that's off because of that coronavirus yeah. thing. But why do you think he wanted to leave the States? Well, because the money's not there for that particular fight. And he got offered money to go and do it somewhere else. I don't know, you know whether it was the virus 
reason that the money, yeah, well, it's what, they, what was said. Um, and listen, it's a risk doing a fight abroad. Yeah, Saudi, something could have gone wrong in the Saudi fight. You know, maybe there's a problem in that part of the world. Maybe there's a problem with the production. I don't know, but everything's a risk when you go outside your comfort zone. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. And there with Ramirez, an example where, you know, for no fault of top ranks, it's cancelled. But unfortunately, now Ramirez is going, hang on, I've done 12 weeks, when's the date? And now they've got to find a new date. We know Saudi pulled it off of Amir Khan, Joshua Ruiz. Has there been a lot of sort of interest from the Middle East, other countries? Yeah, there has been a long, but, you know, there's never been the interest to the level where a country in the Middle East has paid the kind of money that they have for Joshua Ruiz. And I go back to the fact that everything Saudi promised me, they delivered. Prince Khalid, the team, um, you know, SCE, unbelievable. Um, so Omar and the guys, they did exactly what they promised. And therefore, we will extend our partnership and we look forward to announcing some big fights for 2020. Moving on, we heard it in the unscripted thing with Andy Ruiz, left Manny Robles, yeah. surprised? Yeah, a little bit. It's a bit sad, really. You know, I think they achieved a lot together. I think Manny Robles is a brilliant trainer, but I wish them both the best. Obviously, we're looking at that Andy Ruiz, Dylan White fight. Mm. Um, but yeah, you said you just want to see Andy Ruiz back in the ring. Is there any other heavyweights that you've got you put him in the ring with? Andy Ruiz? Yeah, yeah he could fight any of our guys. Hergovic, uh, Povetkin, Joseph Parker, rematch, you know, Usyk. Uh, Dillian White, Derek Chisora, like you know, we've got uh, Martin Bacoli, you know, there's loads of options. So I just, I think what you saw from guys there, we're fans of Andy Ruiz, you know what I mean? And I think we're going to see him in some great fights. Uh, Demetrius Chandra's uh, four-fight deal, you've yeah, done? new extension to his contract. Obviously, he's got to beat Luke Keelan next Imagine if he loses. He's in trouble. But, um, you know, big fights now for Demetrius. I, I believe he's one of the best, maybe the best middleweight in the world. So he's got to go out there, and, but he's got to get the fights to prove it. And that's our job, and he's put our trust in us. A lot of interest from Steven Espinosa said he offered him a deal last night. Top rank, everybody wanted, obviously, the world middleweight champion, and, and I'm pleased he's put his faith in us. We know Golovkin's going to fight as mandatory. Now, that's rumoured for Chicago. Yes. Rumours that Akoli Glowacki could be out there as well? Yes, if, if we go to Chicago, Akoli Glowacki would work well there. Could happen in Kazakhstan, the Golovkin fight as well. Um, we'll see, but that's all due to be wrapped up in the next two weeks. And have you seen Josh Taylor go with top rank in MTK? Did you try and sign him? No, I didn't make it. I spoke to Cyclone Promotions a little bit, but I think there's a good chance that, um, you know, uh, with MTK and top rank, we can work together maybe to even put Josh Taylor on Sky. You know, I mean, top rank and MTK don't have an official broadcast home. A lot of MTK stuff is on Sky. Um, and we're happy to work with top rank to look at, you know, like I said, our job for Sky is to put on the best schedule we can. It doesn't always mean, oh no, you know, we won't work with anybody and it's just got to be matchroom shows. We've showed in the past we're willing to work with everybody to make sure we get the best schedule. Sky Sports do have the best schedule in the UK, unrivaled, and bringing Josh Taylor to that platform is something we'll potentially look at and we've spoke to about as well. What did you actually make of the move itself going to ESPN and top rank? I think when you get offered the Ramirez fight, the undisputed fight, which is basically the one he wants over everything if if you can be guaranteed that fight you have to take it and I think he made the right decision there's potentially crawl for that 147 which yeah, inter yeah. yeah I think that's why I think the move for him was the right move because you can get the undisputed fight you could potentially move to 47 to fight Crawford for us I would have offered him probably Mikey Garcia but you know in terms of a, a better plan I think that came from top rank Interesting about uh, Crawford, Bob Arum's come out and said that he'd do a two-fight deal with Conor McGregor. I mean, Bob Arum said that Conor McGregor against Mayweather was the most disgusting thing for the sport he's ever seen. Now he's trying to get the fight for Crawford, so uh, I don't think that, that works. Crawford is an amazing boxer, doesn't have the profile for the Mayweather, uh, for, the, for the McGregor fight, in my, in my opinion. And let's just see Errol Spence against Terence Crawford. That's what we want to see. McGregor's also been linked with Manny Pacquiao. Uh, would you be... I don't really like that either. I, look, no. McGregor and Floyd... Perfect mix, right? Two guys, huge profiles, huge characters and personalities. He was a bit old. I, I don't think Manny and Connor gel. Like Terence and Connor definitely don't gel. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you've got to be careful. Do you think that and ends quickly? Sure. What? Do you think that ends quickly? Yeah, but you've just got to make sure that it's at least competitive, right? I mean, look, I can't comment too much. I'm sticking a couple of YouTube fights on the undercard. But at least they're 50 50 fights. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, Conor McGregor against one of the pound for pound greats, it's not going to be competitive in a boxing match. So, yeah, we've just got to you know, make sure that it's interesting. I remember when he said, Dance for me, Eddie. Has there been any I like. I told you, can't dance for Conor McGregor all he wants, you know. Uh, listen, I, 
we're always here if Connor ever wanted to work with us. I'm sure he's doing his own thing anyway. But for me, when I look at um, fighters, when I look at brands, when I look at self-promoters, Conor McGregor is right at the top of the tree. You know, for me, I've met him for a minute of my life. So I don't know the guy personally, but I have a huge amount of respect for one, what he's done in the octagon, but two, what he's done with his business and the way that he carries himself, the way that he promotes himself. Oh, and um, you know, in that respect, there's no one ever been like it. I mean, he's, you know, he's taken the UFC, the UFC was a brand and it didn't matter who you were, you were never bigger than the UFC. Conor McGregor is bigger than the UFC. That's the reality. He is the UFC. It's like Eddie Earn boxing, isn't it? Yeah, you're quite right. I mean, Eddie Earn is boxing. No, no, I'm not, I'm not that, but he is that. And I respect Just him. rounding this off, I saw on World Boxing News yesterday, yeah. Riddick Bowe has been trying to approach you, make a comeback. Like this, this one guy, I can't even know his name, he's called the office a million times saying, have you signed the contract yet? I'm like, what? He said, I sent you a contract for the Riddick Bowe fight. I said, what are you talking about? And like, World Boxing News has become like a parody. It's, uh, I don't know what's going on. I said, no, I'm not interested in the Riddick Bowe Bo fight. Bowe v Huda. I've no idea. They said, well, we've sent you a contract. You have to do this. I said, I'm not interested. Go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. So, yeah, random. All right, thank you very much, Eddie. Right, Enjoy Miami. Star Promotions is proud to present Floyd Money Mayweather. The man himself is coming to the UK for his UK tour, February and March 2020. For all info and tickets, Goldstar Promotions, the host of the UK.